What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today we're going to be talking about some huge updates for Season 4 Reloaded, some unexpected content, plus even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before you jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and also in the background, enjoy some nasty nuke gameplay here on Shipment using the brand new ISO 45 SMG. Might just be one of the best weapons in the game as of right now, as you'll be seeing here in the footage. It was a ton of fun and getting a nuke on Shipment is not an easy task. But also as a reminder, be sure to check out all of our new articles going up over on Detonated.com. Detonated is of course a brand new news outlet that I went ahead and founded to go ahead and expand on all the coverage you're seeing here on the channel for every Call of Duty game mode. We also got more tweets going up over on Detonated's Twitter. The link to Detonate is, of course, down below in this video's description. But today, the brand new Grim Wolfpack released for about 2,000 COD points. As I covered in a previous video, there was a bug a couple of days ago allowing you to actually buy the bundle early via the message of the day. Not sure what happened with that or if that ever got fixed, but the bundle has officially released as of today for those out there looking for the ability to play as a wolf here inside of COD 2.0. Now, in terms of the start times and preloads for Season 4 Reloaded, as of right now, according to a bunch of evidence that we have, as we'll go over in a second, the mid-Season 4 update does begin on July the 12th, which isn't that far away from now. But considering Season 4 is a much shorter season, it's going to feel pretty interesting how we're going to go ahead and get marketing this week for the mid-season update, the release of that content the week after that, and then before we know it, marketing will already begin for our fifth season of Modern Warfare 2, beginning on what is proposed to be August the 2nd, according to the in-game battle pass timer. But the mid-season update should go live on Wednesday, July 12th at about 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 o'clock Central, and 12 o'clock Eastern. That's typically the release window for all of our major title updates inside of Call of Duty. And shortly before that, maybe on Monday the 10th or Tuesday the 11th, you may end up seeing a preload pop up for PlayStation specifically, and then one shortly after that for Xbox. And of course, the update will not become downloadable or installable for PC until the beginning of the season itself, or the mid-season itself, I should say, on Wednesday, July 12th. That's again, typically how these updates do work, but I'll keep you guys posted if anything does change in terms of how this mid-season update is released this time around. Now, as I talked about in previous videos, they have changed the way the preloads have worked for Modern Warfare 2, whether it's the beginning of a season, whether it's the mid-season update, and if you look at how Modern Warfare 19, Cold War, and Vanguard worked, you were able to install a preload a good day before or even longer than when the content was meant to go live, and that's fine for those out there that have slower internet and need to get a bit of a head start so that they're on pace to play with everybody else when the content does officially drop, but then you have the usual folks out there they go ahead and data mine the update they post a bunch of spoilers about whatever's going on in that season they post a bunch of leaks about content that's releasing in a future season and you have people out there that are able to go into private matches load up the maps modes weapons a bit early so in order to avoid stuff like that they've since stopped the ability to install preloads a good day or two before a new season begins for mw2 or even a mid-season and it is unfortunate though for those out there that have slower internet they're a bit behind schedule when it comes to when they're able to play the new dlc so i totally understand that viewpoint now, to get prepared for the next big title update, I'm happy to announce that I partnered with Apex PCs to bring you three fantastic customizable computers built to serve your needs in COD 2.0. You can use code DYNAMITE to save up to $250 off your next purchase. The best part is, you can also finance these PCs for as little as $67 a month, and there's three options, nuclear, bombshell, and even detonated, which again, are fully customizable and ready to be used for content creation and even sweating games of multiplayer or warzone. Now, investing in a PC is a big decision, so that's why I'm proud to be partnered with people that'll build trust worthy computers that'll definitely fit your needs here in the Call of Duty community or for any other games that you guys enjoy. But once again, check out Apex PCs with a special link down below in this video's description or even the pinned comment. Now, in terms of trailers, marketing, and blog posts for our mid-season 4 update, this Wednesday the 5th should be when we get a major blog post about Season 4 Reloaded. Typically, a good week before a new season or mid-season drops, we end up getting a blog post or a roadmap and a bunch of tweets over on Twitter talking about what DLC is on the way. So that should be this upcoming Wednesday. But again, considering how short Season 4 actually is, they may start marketing the mid-season a bit earlier than usual. They may even release the mid-season earlier than usual. But I'll keep you guys posted with what exactly is going to happen. I would say we'll get some teasers this Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday about what the content actually is going to entail. And then Wednesday, we'll get our major blog post. And then maybe towards the end of the week or early next week on the 10th, we'll end up getting a couple little gameplay trailers and snippets here and there on the Call of Duty YouTube channel, which again, I'll be covering in a bunch of separate videos. And also be sure to follow Detonated on Twitter to keep up to date with everything going on inside of the series. Now, first and certainly foremost, we have a new 6v6 map coming in our mid-season update called Vandal Waterfront. Now, this is, of course, an area pulled 
from Vondel, but I would say it's drastically changed to ensure that it feels like an exclusive environment for regular multiplayer. It's not just an area that you can walk across inside of Vondel BR and be like, yep, yeah, this is exactly the same area you see in multiplayer. They kind of did that with Almazra, but they're not doing that again here with Vondel. It was confirmed to me at the studio about a month ago by somebody who actually worked on the game that they want to make sure that they actually modify the layout and environment to better suit 6v6, since areas that may fit well in Resurgence or BR might not translate over pretty well into multiplayer. So keep that in mind. It's not just an easy one-to-one -one port. And with that, it's the only new multiplayer map that we know is coming in the mid-season update. Again, it's fine considering that Season 5 is just around the corner, a couple of weeks away. But I am curious, right? Based on the Activision data breach a good couple of months ago, that data breach did suggest that we're getting four gunfight maps per season moving forward. Again, that information may be out of date, but I'm curious if two more gunfight maps will be surprise dropped with our mid-season and they'll keep that trend going for the remainder of the game cycle where the season launches, you get a couple 6v6 maps, two gunfight maps, some ground war maps, and then during the mid-season you get whatever's left on the roadmap, plus two more gunfight maps as well to total out to four gunfight maps per season. Curious if they're going to do that or not, or if they'll just save them for season five, which isn't that far away. Now, speaking of Vondel, we're also getting Battle Royale support on the map itself. Again, Vondel is a mid-size BR map. It's right in between Almazra and Ashika Island, so it's going to go ahead and support Battle Royale much better than Ashika would have, and we're also getting a new Gulag inside of Vondel because Battle Royale support is coming, and ironically, a good week and a half ago, gameplay actually surfaced over on Twitter of the Vondel Gulag. Can't show you the footage on screen for obvious copyright reasons, but the footage was taken down due to a DMCA complaint from Activision, and you can probably still find it if you search for it online. It's probably on their Telegram, the usual suspects that post all the leaks for Call of Duty. They probably posted it somewhere, but the Gulag is very similar to the showers that we had over in Verdansk. For those out there that wanted a similar 1v1 type of experience, you're going to get that over in Vondel. Now, with that, there's also a feature that got confirmed last season, which was meant to come out in Season 3, but just didn't, and that's the decontamination stations, right? Those are, of course, in Warzone 1, and is a feature that I would have thought would have been available day one in Warzone 2, but just wasn't, and apparently that's just a little unknown right now, right? It was confirmed for Season 3, or Season 3 Reloaded, just never came out, and they haven't really mentioned it ever since, but maybe there's a chance that out of nowhere, as a surprise drop during Season 4 Reloaded, but the blog post also mentions the return of the Occupation Public Scan event, which we also got added into Warzone 1. I think it was during Cold War or Vanguard's life cycle. Can't remember exactly when that was. And also a new redacted quest of some sort. Not sure if that means it's something along the lines of an Easter egg that we had from Verdansk, where there's multiple steps and they're very difficult to do. I would just hope that whatever quest we end up getting is also doable inside of the DMZ version of that Warzone map, just to ensure that you're not dealing with the storm all that much. And it's still a challenge to do any Easter egg inside of DMZ if we had it in both game modes. But like we saw with the free MP5 blueprint a couple of weeks ago, it's a great quest and the reward is pretty good, but with the idea that you have to worry about the storm, which could close off portions of the map you need, would be helpful to be able to do a quest like that inside of DMZ. Now, we also have a new sector coming to the Battle Pass. So for the very first time, we're getting an expansion to a Battle Pass during a mid-season update. Never seen this before. So as they wrote in the blog post, anyone can be rewarded for their efforts, specifically a new redacted, not sure what that is, maybe a weapon, and other items by playing the game and using their Battle Pass progress towards this new sector. So if there's a weapon in this sector, I'm assuming you can still get that for free even if you don't own the Battle Pass, but I'm wondering if this is separate from an expansion to the Assault on Vondel event, which of course offers a series of challenges and other cosmetic rewards. There's community aspects to that event, which of course have already been completed, allowing us to unlock things like taxi cabs and trams inside of Vondel, the Reinforcement Flare, the Personal Supply Box, the Tanfa Melee Weapon, or the base version that is. So I'm curious if there's going to be an expansion to that where we get a separate series of challenges, which might be related to the Boys Cross over as we'll talk about in a minute and that'll all be kept separate from the battle pass sector that's also being added here in season four reloaded according to the in-game battle pass timer again season five begins on august 2nd but this new sector does open up on july the 12th which again makes sense since that's the supposed release date of season four reloaded but the assault on a vondel timer does mention that the challenges do reset a couple days before season four reloaded so maybe that's a mistake and the challenges are meant to reset on the same day that the new battle pass sector goes live if not though i'll keep you guys posted with what's going on with the assault on vondel event and whether or not new challenges are going to be added in. But speaking of the boys, that is a confirmed crossover for Call of Duty here in Season 4. We got a nice glimpse of the boys logo spray painted onto a building in Vondel within our recent Season 4 trailer. We got the Twitter accounts of the boys in Call of Duty teasing this supposed crossover. And I know Insider Gaming also reported on some information a good couple of weeks ago that apparently we have the operators such as Homelander, Billy Butcher, and possibly even Black Noir coming to the game. So that's going to be really exciting. Now, if I had to take a guess, I would say somebody like Homelander or Billy Butcher would probably be brand new original operators with voice lines.
things but somebody like black noir doesn't even talk in the show is probably just going to be an operator skin for somebody else that's just my guesstimate as of right now there's of course plenty of other characters that would be great inside of call of duty right imagine soldier boy or even somebody else from the seven i mean let me know who you want to see added in this crossover down below in this video's comments it's also possible that we don't even get too many operators might just get one or two tops maybe not three it's a little unknown but i'd be curious to see if whatever releases with the boys crossover also comes with a series of challenges you can do inside of any game mode of your choice now to build on this crossover with the boys there's two new multiplayer modes that got leaked out for mw2 and one of them sounds like it would fit perfectly with the upcoming crossover one of them is called havoc and this mode turns you into a literal super soldier as different modifiers do get activated every so often in your matches of havoc and it sounds like you're taking compound v and that's what create some of these modifiers in your match the modifiers range from so many different things like being cranked or having anti-gravity or being able to shoot molotovs out of a crossbow auto reloading on kills gaining armor on kills so many crazy crazy abilities that feel like they fit perfectly with a bit of a superhero crossover i mean look at this right advanced uav always active a random gun on kill special crate delivery with a twist <laughs> three kills give a random kill streak i mean so many ridiculous abilities that sound perfect for a crossover with something like the boys i'd be shocked if this mode doesn't come out with the upcoming crossover here in season four reloaded another game mode also leaked out a couple of days ago and the mode is apparently called rupture where you have to capture a juggernaut it seems like one person gets chosen to be a juggernaut in that match everybody out there has to kind of gain up on him I'm not sure if that's exactly what you have to do or if that's just placeholder material for a mode that is nowhere near release but again two game modes for multiplayer did leak out for mw2 we also have a new shotgun coming out here in our mid-season update it was teased a little bit in the blog post as a redacted shotgun not sure if that's the same redacted item you can get in the upcoming battle pass sector for season four reloaded but as of recently a big list of weapons did leak out for the game and apparently the tavor ts12 is the only shotgun that got leaked out so that's probably what the shotgun exactly is but again it's a little unknown as of right now we also could take a look at the weapon mastery charm for season four if you look at the one that we have for the tempest razorback it lists that five weapons are actually featured here in season four whereas right now we only know about four of them two from the battle pass the tom melee weapon and the redacted shotgun what's that fifth one it could of course be a mistake in the menu itself there actually isn't a fifth weapon or a surprise one is dropping at some point in our mid-season updates as a part of maybe the salt and vondo expansion or the new battle pass sector we'll just have to wait and see but speaking of weapons right i want to ask you guys what happened to the lm nebula barrel attachment i saw who's immortal actually tweeted about this a couple of days ago and i'm like yeah i actually forgot about this a couple of months ago during i think season two infinity wars somehow slipped an lm nebula barrel attachment into some patch notes dealing with weapon balancing and that's an attachment that doesn't actually exist in the game but they mentioned on twitter that it would be something coming in a future season and since the attachment doesn't even exist we're like okay is that a part of another dlc weapon entirely a different weapon tree another receiver it's unclear what that exactly is or if that's still coming to the game if we're gonna bring that up real quickly for those out there that are like hey what actually happened to that and it's kind of like decontamination station where something got confirmed or mentioned or announced and just disappeared after that so we'll have to wait and see what the future is for that attachment or a weapon it's actually attached to but we then have raid episode four this is going to be the finale to the raid series here inside of mono warfare 2 i am aware that originally five raids were confirmed and announced they mentioned that a post-launch story would be stretched across five seasons it's still unclear what that means for mw2 cycle will there still be a fifth and sixth season absolutely but in terms of the post-launch story the one inside of raid is ending here in season four and we'll still have other post-launch narratives being told through the seasonal cutscenes, through dmz and who knows what else but in terms of raids that's all coming to an end so i'm curious if we get our last raid here and the post-launch narrative continues being told even with that same set of characters and plot just in different game modes not raid we'll have to wait and see how that works but apparently we're getting a free Farah skin unlocked by completing raid episode 4 and rumors have suggested that apparently you can unlock Hadir as an operator by having completed all raids that's again just a rumor but wouldn't be surprised if we got our first Hadir operator bundle here inside of MW2 maybe not even a bundle but just a base skin unlock by having done all the raids wouldn't be shocked if we get more randomized rewards for doing this new raid X amount of times and even maybe an animated camo for doing it on veteran like we got with raid episode 3 we'll totally be a fan of that one but considering we didn't get a seasonal raid bundle in season 3 we ended up getting an alex operator bundle instead here in season 4 i'm curious if we'll get more operator bundles for farah or even hadir shortly after this episode does come out now i am curious if we're gonna get any more spec ops missions added into the game despite raids coming to an end those are a part of spec ops we could still get some more two-player only missions that do drop over the course of the next two seasons or so maybe that'll still happen depending on how the player count looks for spec ops overall now, something that got brought to my attention on a recent stream is that considering the upcoming rumored reveal for mw3 inside of warzone on 
on August 1st, maybe it does make sense that Raid Episode 4 is the final raid, because at the end of that raid, we'll get a bit of a cliffhanger that leads perfectly into the next Call of Duty, and possibly we'll get a Gurad Crowley Revelation situation where the cutscene ends and you get a logo reveal for the next experience. And in this case, it's going to be Modern Warfare 3, not Revelations. But that would be really interesting, right? A bit of a logo reveal on screen after the cutscene and something that says tune into Warzone August 1st for a live reveal event for every game mode. And that'll be the day before Season 5 kicks off, if that date is still correct. That's going to be a crazy couple of weeks once that comes out. But I think it's totally possible that Raid Episode 4 does set up a big clay finger for the next Call of Duty. And you'll still have some post on story being told that also leads into the next Call of Duty. But the major plot point through the raids will get left on a bit of a bombshell by the end of Season 4 Reloaded. Now, last and certainly not least, I'm sure you guys are probably wondering, well, what's going to get added into DMZ with Season 4 Reloaded? Quite a bit already got added at the start of the season, so I'd be shocked to see much more added during our mid-season. We got a reputation system, we got the forward operating base, passive challenges, a bunch of new missions, unlocks, and features in the game itself like the wallet. We got so much added to DMZ that I find it hard to believe we'll get much more on July 12th. I figured they'd probably save some other major updates for Season 5, which is just around the corner, but I do have an idea and suggestion adding in a new weapon blueprint build over into Vondo, right? We got one of those added into Koshai Complex in Season 3 Reloaded, and that was a lot of content in one day. I think that was the biggest update we've probably ever gotten inside of COD on a single day. I mean, we got a lot added into DMZ that day, a brand new map, weapon cases, the weapon blueprint build. We also got the new raid. We got so many things added that day, so I'm curious what they'll do here this time around, but it will be cool to see weapon blueprint builds added into all previous DMZ maps here on July the 12th, right? All maps but Koshai Complex, since that map already has one. That would be a cool thing to add in every mid-season update, just to keep DMZ fresh and spicy, and to provide some type of replayability for those out there that might have already played the new map a bunch of times, got all the weapon cases, may have finished most of their faction missions. That's what I think is perfect for July the 12th. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the huge updates and unexpected content that is apparently dropping with Season 4 Reloaded? What else do you want to see added on that day? And anything that I missed, please let me know down below in the comments if there's new rumors out there that I somehow glanced over. It could be content that's being saved for Season 5 or at some point after that. Let me know how you feel down below. Really hope you've enjoyed and peace. Peace out, everybody.